What makes more power on an LS? Carburetors or fuel injection? In this video, we're finally gonna decide what makes more power on your LS? Carburetors or fuel injection? This is the last test I'm gonna do and this is finally gonna decide it. Which one makes more power? This is it. Are we really gonna decide that? Probably not. And here's why. If you go to the internet and talk about carburation versus fuel injection, they're basically two camps. There are guys that think that fuel injection is the only way to go. And there are guys that think that carburation is the only way to go. The reality is that there's a third camp and that's the one that I belong to and anybody that's done any real testing. Fuel injection works well. Carburation works well. They both work well. One doesn't have to be better than the other. They both work well, in fact, how we deliver the fuel to the motor has much less of an effect on power than the intake manifold design that we use to inject the fuel to. Let me give you an example. A lot of guys think that fuel injection versus carburation just means this. We go to the wrecking yard, we pick up a 5.3, we run it on the dyno, we take off the fuel injection, which is the truck intake and, and fuel injectors and fuel rails, take that off and replace it with a carburetor. And to them, that means any intake manifold that has a carburetor on it. So we run that and we compare them. That's the universal thing, fuel injection versus carburetion. But the reality is the intake manifold that we choose to run that test on has a much bigger effect than how we're supplying fuel. If we compare the truck manifold to a dual plane, it's a different test than comparing the truck manifold to a single plane or comparing either one of those intakes to a fast manifold or a high ram or a sniper. You see, how we deliver the fuel, whether it's through fuel injectors or carburetors, has much less of an effect than where we deliver the fuel. And that's what we're gonna show in this test. I ran a test on an actual LS1, a 5.7 liter LS1 with the high ram. Now the high ram allowed me to run port injection versus carburetion on the same intake manifold. And we ran a few different lids on it, so it's really cool stuff. Let's check it out. To run this very last ultimate comparison on carburetion versus fuel injection, I'm sure that there's going to be more. I ran, this was a, actually a 5.7 liter LS1. It started out as a, a, an LS1 crate motor way back in the day. This was one of the first ones that the guys from West Tech had. They had it laying around for a couple of years before I finally, Tom and I actually got these, these things running. But this one was upgraded. We put forge rods and pistons in it because it had a little uh, adventure on, on the dyno during one of the tests. So they replaced the the rods and pistons with forge pistons. It was a forge flat top piston with valve release, which allowed us to run enough camshaft in this thing. So we put a healthy comp cam in it. It was a 54-471. See, I didn't even run a 469 in it, -11. That was a 624 lift a 239-255 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And the reason I did that is because I was trying to make some fairly good power with this 5.7 liter um, just by itself. And then we ended up doing this high ram carburation versus fuel injection test. But we had the healthy cam in it. We had obviously hardened push rods in it. We had good cylinder heads on. They were RHS CNC heads. And it looks to me, these are real early ones. It looks to me like maybe the guys from RHS, uh, and let me know if you guys out there know, know anything about this, because I certainly don't. I don't have any firsthand experience or any information, but these RHS heads that we have look an awful lot like mast heads. <laughs> I don't know if mast maybe did heads for them early on, but these heads, these cathedral port heads work really well. And they, like I said, they, <laughs> they look a lot like the mast stuff, which we know has worked well in the past. So anyway, they had good heads on it. And obviously we had the high ram on there. We were controlling this with the fast EF or the uh, Holly HP management system. It had a set of inch and seven eighths headers on it. And to get things started, we ran this 5.7 liter LS1 with the high ram and the lid with the single front throttle body with 102 millimeter throttle body on it. We had, I think we had 80 pound injectors or 83 pound Holly injectors if I remember right on this thing. And so we had more than enough fuel to do what we were doing. But as you can see, this thing made some pretty healthy power for a 5.7 liter. Equipped as such with that single throttle body opening on the Holly High Ram, this thing made 568 horsepower out here at 7200 RPM. And peak torque checked in at 449.5, so 450 foot-pounds of torque. And peak torque occurred at 6100 RPM. So the combination of this displacement and that much camshaft we had plenty of head flow and the high ram, which is a relatively short runner compared to like a fast or obviously a truck manifold. It's making peak power out fairly high. So the first test that we did was to compare this lid to a dual quad lid 
with 2,000 CFM throttle bodies on. So two four-hole 4150,000 CFM throttle bodies. We were still had the injectors down in the port where they are on the high ram where you're running EFI. So this had the lid with the dual quad, you know, more flow, 2,000 CFM throttle bodies, more than enough airflow. And I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Does just changing the lid to that dual quad high ram lid change power? We didn't see a big change in power when I put the Keglodon on the high ram, so I don't know if the Planum actually was responsible for any of this. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. But changing to the dual quad definitely changed the power, and both, you know, air fuel is optimized, timing is optimized, all of that stuff. So equipped with the um, dual quad lid, this thing and the two 4150 throttle bodies, this thing made 574 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 456 foot-pounds of torque. So it basically, it helped everywhere from, let's say, 46 or 700 RPM all the way out. Um, you know, it was a good gain and, and a sizable change, given the fact that all we did was change the lid. Now, I don't know how restrictive a 102 millimeter throttle body is on the high ram with that single opening, but when we did this test, Here's what happened. Let's get to our next test. After running our comparison between the high ram with the single throttle opening with a 102 millimeter throttle body versus the dual quad opening with the two 4150 throttle bodies, we decided to put carburetors on in place of the throttle body. So we took the 4150,000 CFM throttle bodies off and replaced them with two Holley 650 XP carburetors and ran those in place of the throttle body. So. Here's a comparison between the single hole front entry 102 millimeter throttle opening on the high ram versus the carburetors. Here are the carburetors and equipped with the two 650 carburetors. This thing made 579 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 462 horsepower. Remember, this is a comparison between the front throttle body opening the single 102 millimeter and versus carburation on the dual quad so you might be asking yourself okay well how does it compare to the two uh, <laughs> thousand cfm you know 4150 throttle bodies so here's that that's the green so the carburetors made more power than both the single front mount 102 millimeter throttle body on the high ram they made more than the two dual quad 1,000 CFM four-hole throttle bodies, they made more power than either one of them. And so now here's another interesting test after running this. And, and before I get to that, by the, by the way, the reason for this doesn't have anything to do with flow. <laughs> it's not the fact that, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, that, the, that these uh, two 650 carburetors don't flow, obviously, more than the 2,000 CFM four-hole throttle bodies. It has everything to do with charge cooling. When we introduce fuel at the top of the carburetor on a tunnel ram, we cool the charge air, and if the charge air is cooler, the motor makes more power. And this doesn't do this just this time or sometimes. It does it every time. This is the same reason that you move fuel injectors if you have port fuel injection or that you run multiple injectors. You move the fuel injectors up higher in the port away from the cylinder head because the earlier you inject that fuel in the intake port um, on, of the cylinder of the intake manifold, the more power you're going to make because it cools the charger. There's more time for charge cooling to happen the farther away that is from the combustion chamber. So there's more time because all this is happening very, very quickly. If you do the math on this, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see how, how much time it takes for that air and fuel to travel from its injection point into the combustion chamber at 6,000 RPM, you know, you're talking about <laughs> almost no time at all. So you want anything that you can do to add more time for that charge cooling to take place because it takes time for the fuel and the air to absorb heat. So it takes time for that to happen. If you inject the fuel up at the top where the carburetor does, there's more time for that to happen and it makes more power. We show that time and time again. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran. Basically what I did was <laughs> for the last test, we um, replaced the, we, we kept the carburetors, but ran the motor fuel injected, running just air through the carburetors and supplying the fuel through the injectors to show that the carburetors themselves were not adding power because they flow more, which obviously they don't. So now let's take a look at that. So here's what happened. 
And basically, the carburetors, when we were injecting fuel down at the port, made almost exactly the same power as the throttle body, the two the two 4150 throttle bodies. And the reason for that is, even though the 1,000 CFM throttle bodies flow more than the carburetors, the combination doesn't need more airflow. <laughs> probably one of those 1,000 CFM throttle bodies is probably enough. But two 650 carbs, even with the, the Venturis the way that they are and, and with the boosters and stuff, they flow enough air to support this power level. So injecting the fuel down at the port still has the same effect. It still has minimal charge cooling compared to the carburation at the top of the intake manifold. So all that's what all this is about. It's not about the intake design. It's not about carburation versus fuel injection. It's just where you inject the fuel. And on the carburetor, we're putting the fuel at the top of the intake manifold. There's more time for charge cooling to take place and we make more power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, this is it. Here's your time. Make comments right now. Stop what you're doing, make the comments, Ask me this question, Richard, why didn't you run throttle body injection where you run the fuel at the top where the carburetor enters the fuel so we can get charge cooling and have complete control and have <laughs> better atomization and better fuel and make more power and have it be the ultimate fuel injection. Here's the problem with throttle body injection. First of all, I didn't test it because I didn't have them. But here's the problem with throttle body injection. It, it's not the same as port injection. You are at the mercy of the intake manifold design, which is going to determine distribution in the intake. You see, throttle body injection doesn't improve fuel distribution. Port injection, we can adjust all the cylinders individually and optimize that, which is a good thing about port injection and allows you, especially if we have 802s, we can go in and do fuel trim. And not so much because I've already shown that in another video. It's not so much for power production, but it's definitely for safety. If you have one cylinder that's running at 14 to 1 at wide open throttle and you can adjust that and put that into the safe zone, it's going to save the motor. Port injection does that. Throttle body injection, much less so. But throttle body injection would probably make as much power as the carburetor because it's supplying the fuel at the top. We have the charge cooling, which we know is the big thing, and it definitely adds power. So there's the answer to your comment. That shouldn't stop you from making the comment. Go ahead and tell me I don't know what I'm doing because everybody does, I'm used to it. I'm Richard Holder, guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, make the comment about the throttle body injection. More testing coming up.